Heart rate 150. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com. We really like to thank everyone who's taken the time to put some comments on our channel. It's one of my favorite parts of doing this work is to the feedback that we get from the viewers. It's very insightful and a lot of it is quite entertaining. So I really do thank you guys for that. The main purpose of today's demonstration, quite simply, is to see or try to mimic what happens in this setting related to an emergency situation. I obviously cannot get my brain to make the cocktail that would allow us to have all of the variables going on that would happen should we need our gun in an emergency. But one of the things we can do is raise our heart rate through exercise and then see what happens and get you introduced as a shooter to what happens when you're trying to control your gun with an elevated heart rate, mimicking a stressful situation you might encounter out on the street. Over the course of my life, I've heard a lot of different arguments about just how much heart rate affects your shooting abilities related to accuracy and speed. There's a lot of studies out there. Matt and I just quickly researched three of them and found very contradictory results amongst the three studies. Two said it absolutely made a difference and the other one did not. And they even go so far in the studies to dif differentiate between fatigue and heart rate. Now it's common sense to me that if you've been holding up a bucket for the last 10 minutes full of sand, you're probably not going to shoot too well when you put the bucket down. Today's video is going to focus more on your heart rate, and there's a reason for that. We're going to start to talk about initially the fight or flight response and what happens when you get into potentially an emergency situation and need to access and then use your firearm. Your brain is hardwired for survival. Something called the sympathetic nervous system, once you're startled and get into a hyper-aroused state, dumps all kinds of chemicals, one of them being epinephrine, norepinephrine, estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol. And when that cocktail comes together, basically what happens is your heart rate goes up, some of your blood vessels constrict while others dilate, and your BP goes way up. Some people have even experienced true tunnel vision where they lose all sense of their peripheral vision. That can be extraordinarily bad in an emergency situation. So what we're gonna to attempt to find out today is exactly when you start to notice a backward trend in your shooting skills and what you can potentially do to train through that point as you practice either in dry fire or on the range. Please keep in mind that some of the things we're gonna to do today are done in a very controlled environment. We're on the range inside here at Buffalo Trading Company's indoor range, and I'll be using some of their outside campus to get my heart rate up. As we go through this demonstration, I'd like for everybody to keep in mind that shooting a handgun is not the same thing as shooting a rifle from a supported position or the prone. If you guys delve into this topic on your own, you're going to find out that your heart rate seems to be a lot more noticeable when you're shooting a rifle in the prone or perhaps standing offhand than people report it does with a handgun. One more study I would like to reference is comes to us from the archery world. If you guys ever watch an archery match on TV, they routinely put the heart rate down in the corner of the screen. I find that to be a very fascinating thing to watch. And the study we'll link to on our site actually suggests that at close ranges, it has absolutely no effect on how well the archers did. They shot three arrows in a minute, and they got actually, in some cases, better results when their heart rate was elevated. So I don't know what all of that means as far as a translation to the real world, but what I can tell you is I'm not a casual PTer. I love doing physical exercise, and I run quite a bit. We're going to put some of my metrics on the channel so you can see my normal resting heart rate when I'm not doing much is around 47. It's slightly elevated now, perhaps it's being on television, but at the end of the day, I'm in fairly good shape. Obviously not an Olympic athlete, but I do okay. One of the th reasons I bring that up is this, when you're already in a good amount of cardiovascular shape, your heart rate is going to recover much quickly than it would if you were not. So when I sprint onto the firing line, Matt's gonna keep custody of our weapons. My goal will be to shoot the handgun while well, my heart rate is at its highest for a true test. But you'll have to bear with me. We have two different yard lines set up and I'll go over the setup here in a second. So obviously in the second form or the second string of fire, my heart rate should be coming down even slightly, but we'll monitor all that because it's linked to my phone. 
What I'll be using for a heart rate monitor is my Garmin watch, which like I said, links to my phone, and Matt will be able to give you some pictures of what's actually going on as we do this sort of laboratory test, which is very unscientific. I'm just mildly curious myself, and in the interest of full disclosure, I've never done this drill before, I've never practiced this, so I'm just as curious as perhaps you are. So right now, let's talk about the setup we have on the range so everybody's a little clearer about what we're doing. First of all, I don't ever just shoot to shoot. I always try to go for time and score. These are an identical target to what we've hung on the range. And as you can tell, we have a 10 ring and of course a nine. I will score at every step. And the first thing we're gonna do is get some baseline metrics on what happens when I'm shooting the gun without an elevated heart rate. I'll record all of those and of course we'll put them on the screen for you guys to compare when we actually have an elevated rate. So without further ado, let's get to shooting. As we establish the baseline data for my score and speed, it's worth noting that when I do this for, with an elevated heart rate, I'm not gonna carry the gun in a holster running around and then come in here and try to pull it out. But what I can do to mimic some sort of maybe semi-complex mechanical operation is I'm gonna start with the gun, slide lock to the rear, and a preloaded mag. And once I get the signal from the shot timer, I'll pick it up, insert it in the well, get the gun into the service, and then try to record five shots at five yards. We have chosen five and seven yards because according to the FBI, that's the most likely range that you're liable to get into an engagement in civilian related shootings. So I'm going to cue my shot timer and we'll write down the score as we go and then compare. So we'll go on the beep. So 532 with the reload. And let's pull her in for score. I had a 48 out of 50. Now the weapon is safe. We're gonna move down to the seven yard line and repeat that process. So same drill again on the beep. I'm going to get the gun into service and record five shots on the target. Way high bad shot initially, 581. So that's down three. Down four. So that is a 46, and the time was 581. Horrible shot on the first go, but that's how it was. So now I'm going to get into some PT gear and see what happens with an elevated heart rate. All right, guys, here I am in PT gear. I'm going to do a little running, a little sprinting, shuttle run, something like that to get the heart rate up. We'll see you on the range in a few. Heart rate 150. Can you get a shot timer? Okay, here we go. Safety first on the beep, five yards. Oh, trying to hurry. Safety first. That time was 5.68 on the beep. Seven twenty-seven, and that's that. Let's do the score. 
Heart rate down to 130, 127. So, I can't recall the time, but in this case, the line breaker saved me. And it looks like we're down three. So that is 47, only one point lower than the baseline. Baseline was 48, this was 47. And for the seven yard, I'm down one. So I did considerably better on this one than the other one where I actually dropped four points. So 49 and then a 47 for a minus four. So I actually did better with an elevated heart rate. Now let's take a break. I'll get my breath back and we'll talk about some reasons why that is. I would like to go over some of the data that we've collected, both on the baseline portion and the portion where I had an elevated heart rate. Even though when we were gathering the baseline data, my heart rate wasn't elevated, I was trying to move at a speed limit just beyond where I was comfortable to truly simulate an emergency situation. It would kind of game the drill, so to speak, to methodically pull it out, sort of you know, take the perfect well-aimed shot. So I was a little past the speed limit. And as you can tell at the seven yard line, we did have a little bit of a wonky trigger manipulation resulting in a high shot. Now there's a concept when you're shooting a handgun that is pretty much goes like this. Based on the skill set of the shooter, the farther away the target is, the more time you have to take. In the seven yard portion, I lost a little track of that, got in a hurry, made a bad shot common mistake, but Matt and I decided when we started to shoot these videos, we weren't going to backtrack and make everything perfect. Misses are misses, it's real world, it's a teaching point, and even when you shoot a lot, you have to always apply the fundamentals. Now, interestingly enough, when I had an elevated heart rate, my score was actually better by one point, and that's because I knew I was in deficit and took the time to apply the techniques and do what I needed to do. Yes, I was slower, and when we get back to the warehouse, we'll come pile the data for you and show how much slower, not only on overall, but per stage. Remember this, you can never shoot fast enough to miss. Misses don't help you. Only accurate shots on target help you. So when I knew I was in deficit, I took a little extra time, still had a wonky shot on the five yarder where I was really huffing and puffing, but would have resulted in a damaging hit, just not one that produced the score I would like. Once I started to figure out, oh boy, I really need to apply myself, the seven yarder went much better. Anecdotally, we're gonna analyze my heart rate. One of the things I noticed as you saw me running in the yard was, very commonly when you start to run, your heart rate spikes up to around 110 in the first minute or two of exercise. Then your brain starts to take over your body and goes, well, we must be going to do this for a while. I'm going to relax a bit. And my heart rate actually started to go down. I had to leave the facility, get out on a long flat, flat stretch where I could really open up and get my heart rate up. That's exactly what's going to happen to you in an emergency situation. You're going to notice that immediate dump. For me, it was only 110 beats a minute. As you can tell, even around 150, 140, I finished at 127. I was still very capable of putting accurate shots on the paper. Now keep this in mind. If you're not used to cardiovascular fitness and your heart rate is only always running around 100, that dump is gonna hit you and it's gonna have an adverse effect. So here's something to maybe try, either in dry fire practice or obviously using safe live fire practices. Do some push-ups, do some jumping jacks, briskly walk, get your heart rate up to the point where you feel like it's up and then try to shoot the gun for the same drills that you normally do and see how it goes. What you're trying to do is combat that wobble zone, make yourself focus even though you're at suboptimal performance due to fatigue. This has been an interesting demonstration. I hope everybody got something out of it. And remember, misses count, they don't help you. And until that bullet hits the ground, you own it, slow down and make the correct shots. One of the other things that Matt and I found interesting about this data is how closely it mimics the previously re referenced army studies as well as the archery study. It would seem to me 
that once your heart rate is around 130 or lower, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. What does make a difference, in my opinion, would be muscle fatigue. If you have to drag, say you're a soldier, drag somebody, climb over a wall, and you're using actual muscle power, it's absolutely vital that you have a stable platform to hold the gun, rifle, shotgun, whatever you're using. When you're in debt, when you're compromised because of muscle fatigue, that's gonna be a very difficult thing for you to do. In my opinion, heart rate affects your performance very minimally, and in fact, in my case, it helped because it made me focus.